Right, I thought we'd do something interesting today. Have a nice little relax. And watch a sump. Watch the old pan. What better things to do, eh? So, uh, you probably noticed I had a really good uh, weekend last weekend at VW Breakout. I've um, got eight good runs down the strip. Uh, with the exception of the run where it jumped out of gear and I uh, burnt up the clutch a bit in third. Um, I'd say it went quite well. I didn't quite manage to beat my best time of 13.1, which was I, mean, I was aiming to get into the 12s. So I was a little bit disappointing, but uh, so apart from that, it was a good, good racing weekend, really. Now, I was saying, I did jump out of gear in that, I think it was the third race, the fourth race, um, and I noticed before I went down to the pod that uh, the front gearbox mount felt a little bit loose, only a slight amount, so a little bit of a judder to it when you were setting off at lights and stuff. Um, so I say go underneath it and tighten up the front gearbox mount just to make sure it wasn't moving anymore, and that seemed to cure the jumping out of gear problem. Uh, but you probably noticed after that, one of the one of the races after that, it started whining. Actually, I made a note in the video. And in the past, when I've over tightened the front gearbox mount, I think it pulls the the gearbox and the engine out of line with the, um, the shift linkage. Um, so to cure that, I actually beefed up the, the bottom shift linkage because it was bending because I was cranking it up so hard. And um, so that's been beefed up so that can't move anymore. So in theory, the gear rocks shouldn't move down further past where it causes the problem anymore. Um, I wanted to make sure I hadn't actually done that or there wasn't some other issue related to linkage. Um, so I actually released it, so I unscrewed it by four turns. And I was going to take it for a run today. Um, when I came to get beef cake out of the garage, Sad face. So you can probably see we're developing a bit of a leak and it seems to be coming from along the seam. Uh, the weld looks to have failed. The, the sump plug itself I've not been able to seal, hence it, I quickly bodged it up with uh, silicon there so I could go racing this weekend. Um, I was going to try a, uh, some kind of rubber high temperature seal instead of the crushable washer because the crushable washer doesn't stop it leaking. That'll teach me to be Mr. Pessimistic. Um, I just took it for a quick run and it looks like it could be just a gearbox mount related issue. Uh, so I'm probably going to look at strengthening the front mount and uh, using urethane instead of the 80 shore rubber and hopefully we uh, can clamp it down enough to stop any movement but not uh, cause anything to go out of line. Happy days! Poor old beast has been a bit neglected the last few weeks since we went racing. Um, I've been working hard on the, the volts rod to try and get Hank up and running. Um, but I'm getting the itch, I want to go for a drive, so I thought we'd get uh, beef fixing up and running again. Um, so we're going to take the sump plug sump off today. Um, we're going to try to resolve why this sump plug won't stop leaking, despite having the correct plug and the crushable washer. Uh, and obviously, as I showed you previously, we've got a split down the, the weld on that side, which we're going to sort out. So we're going to take that for somebody to have that welded up. Um, I may have it reinforced on here as well, so any flexibility or movement in this, uh, hopefully the, the welds won't crack anymore. Um, but look into that when we get off. Um, and while I'm under here, I thought I'd quickly show you this um, ugly bit of aluminium. Um, so I've got a Subaru engine, RJ's gearbox uh, up there somewhere, and then the 091 gearbox. The chances are your setup is different, however you might still have the same opening. So between the bellhouse and the engine is a, an open area here and you can actually see the flywheel and kind of see the, the clutch. Um, and I'm sure when the engine's travelling the other way around it's not really an issue. However, because it was travelling back to front effectively, it looked like an open area, almost to scoop dirt into the clutch. So whether it's an issue or not I don't know, but I basically made this little plate just to cover it. Um, so behind it here is another plate and all this is is a, a flat piece of aluminium which I folded over the top edge and it clamps on using the plate behind it and then just give it a touch as you can see up there there's just a couple of standard uh, 10mm Subaru bolts which just hold it all in place just loosen the, the bolts it should just slide out all being well as I've done quite a few miles with that in place there so there's your little scoop so <laughs> I just kind of figured that Stuff could scoop into that, so that's what it covers and protects. The dipstick tube is held in with a 10mm nut just here, uh, so I've removed that so it's now loose. I'm going to try and pull it out of the sump as best I can. I'll bring it up a bit before I try and take the sump off. 
it was a really tight fit to get it in uh, without splitting the rubber. Went through a few rubbers doing that. There we go. So now we're going to whip off all these Allen heads. Some delicious. So along this bottom edge here, along that weld is where it's failed in this corner. And so it's nothing obvious. I say there's been no impacts or anything, um, but it's not happy. And I also noticed the baffles uh, come off as well. The weld failed there. So we're not having a very good day, really. This is the shortened oil pickup pipe. So it kind of curves around, and then there's a slightly straight section, uh, and most of that section is now gone. Uh, we sleeved over it with a piece of copper pipe and then we actually silver soldered ours in place. So I assume most people will probably go for the brazen option, it's been the, the strongest option before welding. Um, but neither myself or my father were confident doing the brazen because um, we've not done it for so long to be honest. Um, so we went for the silver solder. Now I'm not saying it's the way to do it or how you should do it, but it's been on here for a couple of years now um, and it's not knownly caused any issues, it's not vibrated loose or come off. So it seems to be working AK for, for, for us at least. To measure for shortening your oil pickup feed, what we did was take a measure from the flange on the old sump down to the low point in the, um, the bottom of the sump, which is where the oil pickup feed will draw its oil from. And then a second measurement uh, from the flange down to the bottom of your oil pickup feed. And once you know those two measurements, you can work out how far from the bottom of the sump the oil pickup feed should be sat. Once you have that measurement, you can go to your new sump. Uh, again, measure from the, the flange on there down to the bottom, and then you can work out uh, how much you need to shorten the oil pickup feed tube by so that it sits the same distance from the bottom of your new sump as it did your old. Um, I was surprised how close it sits, so you're going to need to be pretty accurate because um, it's really important, obviously, not to block off uh, the oil feed to your engine. A lot of the aftermarket short sumps vary in terms of how much oil they hold. Now this particular one I got is supposed to be the full volume, so for my engine that's 4.5 litres. So what I did is I got the old original sump and 4.5 litres of water in it to see whereabouts the water or oil level would be within the pan. Um, now on the original sump it came to just below the flange. Um, and then I did the same thing with this new sump and 4.5 litres again came to uh, more or less the same place, just below the flat. However, when I put my dipstick in, um, it came to about there. So we've got the, the low, the full, and then this extra notch. I'm not actually sure what that's for, but I assume it's the don't go past this, your engine will blow up mark or something. Um, but it there it comes to there. So four and a half litres of my engine is on that top little notch, just by coincidence, really. Um, but what you'll probably find is you'll have to put your dipstick in and uh, once you know you've got the right amount of oil in there for the right heights of oil you want and then make a mark on your dipstick after a few tries just to make sure you've got a good reference point to work from um, so when you feel like you know where to top it up to. The sump returns. Check it out. That's proper Yorkshire welding nice. So not all that pretty. A bit rough around the edges. Strong and dependable, that's what you want. So uh, it's re-welded the, the, all around the base part. Um, we have the crack here which we found. Uh, that's about four inches long and it's a, he exposed it while I was there so we could see it. And then after I left he actually uh, he said he found three more areas where it basically hadn't penetrated so uh, it wouldn't have lasted very long in those places either. Um, also the reason my sump wasn't uh, sealing, well it was. It's because the, the welder failed here as well, so there's a couple of areas where it basically hadn't welded properly. Um, and obviously the, weld, the, the oil was seeping out and going around the bottom of the, the plug, so it looked like the plug was leaking. Um, but we've had it tested with solution in now, and not even that tight, and it's, it's absolutely fine. So uh, I'm relatively confident it's uh, oil tight again. Uh, it's also going around the inside edge uh, the runner weld as well, so I doubled it up effectively. So fingers crossed it's... Definitely, definitely going to be sealed. Um, we've reattached the baffle, it's uh, added more weld to the baffle all the way around just to strengthen that. So, I'm going to go clean 
and then hopefully we can chuck it back on. When it comes to refitting your dipstick tube you want to order the proper silicone rubber seals from Subaru or an agent and um, these ones are a little bit more expensive than the, the standard rubber ones you can get um, but the size is important and the small difference makes uh, a lot of difference. Uh, also these seem stronger so they didn't break as easy as the, the standard rubber ones you can use and I imagine they're probably all safe for a lot longer too. So uh, say for the sake of a quid or two, uh, get the right ones. I also ordered some crushable seals for the uh, oil plug. Um, so that's the OEM number if it helps, and that's from a 85 to a 2016 EJ20. Probably fits a lot more though. I've given the sump a good clean. Um, I just want to swap the crushable ring or washer. It's on the drain plug. Oops. Before I forget, I put oil in. Like a complete plonker, I forgot to order another gasket. So <laughs> I'm actually going to reuse the one that I took off. Um, I did take it off carefully and it's not damaged anywhere, that, well, not that I can see. Um, it's not actually the original gasket. I'm, I'm not even sure they have a gasket off the, on the original sump, I'll be honest. I can't remember if, it's, if there's no gasket there, if it's using the sealant or if there's a paper one, I just can't remember. But this is one I bought aftermarket. Um, and I say it's it's just like you get on um, on your rockers, your rocker gasket. Um, and normally you just give it a, a, a lev oil, um, and that's enough, and you clamp it down at that. Um, I personally um, have always have used blue oil mark for a long, long time. Say so I'm a bit of a dinosaur. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend using anything that's silicon based anywhere near. Uh, what could get into the engine, everything squeezes into the engine anywhere last thing you want is silicon inside there so uh, I've always used that and it's a product I was recommended by an engine builder Cracky, a well known one about 20 years ago and uh, I've, say, I've always stuck to it so it does the job so I'm going to give it a little slip of that so you really really only need a very very small amount um, I'm going to put a layer on both sides and hopefully it will help hold the uh, the gasket in place as well so it's not sliding around when I'm trying to put the sump on the engine. Right, so I'm going to put the, uh, the sealant on the bottom of the engine rather than the gasket. Um, hopefully it will uh, be less messy that way and should the gasket need to come off it's, uh, it's easy to handle. The sump is on, and it went relatively well this time round, it's uh, quite chuffed. Uh, the hardest bit is getting the first couple of bolts started. Um, basically your gasket wants to move around a little bit when you're using a separate gasket like I have. Uh, so, say so just trying to move the gasket out of the way of the, the holes and get the first two on fiddly. But once you've done that, you've got two hands and it's quite straightforward. It's just a case of getting a tiny little screwdriver and moving the gasket out of the way. Press it up so it stops the gasket from moving and then you can put your bolt in. Uh, trickiest part, I guess, was the um, get, getting the uh, the dipstick tube in, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so with this time, this time around, I, I had, had hung very loosely on two uh, two of the bolts, angled it as best I could to line up with the tube, and then uh, gently wiggled the tube into uh, into the sump. Um, I also put a dab of grease on the the seals just to help them slide in. I'm a bit confused because I've only put about four liters in and it's showing us full on the dipstick. So uh, I think I might have remembered it wrong and it's actually a four litre sump rather than four and a half litre. It's been a while since I did it to be honest. Um, so we're just going to start the engine, make sure that the oil galleries and everything uh, are full of oil. Uh, I'll reach out the levels and we should be good to go. We'll pull them off. <laughs> 